the black hole's one and only pariah crow kamikaze here. Just want to say, look at my eyes. Just want to see, yo, look at, look at my eyes. The eyes of a defeated man. Looking all disheveled and broken. <laughs> Lucky Charms spent so much energy talking shit and drinking whiskey. <laughs> Should have put more time into learning how to peel the arm from a two-on-one. As I said before, Habib should have gotten fight on the night bonus on October 6th. Because him and his crew handed out bonus ass whippings. <laughs> I mean, Habib was just being the ideal hardworking employee. Putting in extra hours on the job. It's only business. <laughs> oh, oh, you white flagging out now? You, you too deep in it now, buddy. No turning back. Don't white flag out now. Here, take this extra ass whipping from my crew, courtesy of Dagestan. <laughs> oh, come on, Pariah broke now. It's been like two or three weeks already. Get over it. Aw, oh, don't tell me the McGregor clan can dish but can't take. Connor and his short bus cult fan base have been radical assholes these past few years now. But now I want fans to be hush hush once old Connie gets obliterated. The McCucks. That's what I like to call the Connor fan base. The McCucks. Oh, don't turn into church mice now. McFlincher has been lighting match after match after match. Been throwing log after log after log into the fire. Now wants things to ease down. Who wants the tide turns? Karma, baby. Karma, baby. Before the fight on October 6th, all of the armchair psychologists and media hecklers were instigating and poking fun at Khabib. Talking about Connors in his head. Yet little weasel McGregor traveled thousands of miles to Dagestan to dig up dirt like a woman that got her heart broken. Nah, homie, Habib was in your head. Like everyone, I recently saw Connor McGregor's post fight slash self analysis post on Instagram. <laughs> my, 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 Mr. Mind Games still thinking about that ass whipping from October 6th, eh? Oh, Lucky Charms typed out quite the novel. Looks like Habib is still in his head. Guess that makes Habib the true king of the mental warfare game. After reading the first line of that Instagram post, I almost clicked out of the post. I couldn't even read it. I, I almost clicked out of the post. I almost didn't even finish reading it. Talking about, I believe from a sport standpoint, round one was his. Oh, here we go. Sport standpoint. From a sport standpoint, already sugarcoating that ass. From a sport standpoint, already sugarcoating that ass whipping. <laughs> Putting out, pa putting out, putting out passive aggressive excuses masquerading in a deception of humbleness. Oh, I see you, Mystic Mac. Well played. You thought of everything. Props, Mystic Mac. Well played. Boy, be real. I'm glad Habib's brother Ali put up a counter post to that weak shit. <laughs> hey, word. Ali stay having his foot on Connor neck. <laughs> Those tiny covert excuses can't give me a break. You gave, you gave in again. Get choked left and right. Boy, you choke more than thoughts on dick. You roll over and give up your back quicker than a $5 hooker. <laughs> Had the nerve to even say Habib was running. Nah, kid. I mean, you would know something about running, though, wouldn't you? Running from Nate Diaz and all. Literally turned around and sprinted. Looked like the Irish Usain Bolt. <laughs> Karma, baby. All of that karma is blowing back into Connie's face. Karma, baby. The Connor Cucks try to say, well, at least Connor is respectful after fights. No, he isn't. Oh, no, he isn't. Win or lose, he's always a prick. Fakes respect and goes right back to disrespecting his former opponents. For example, Floyd Mayweather. Floyd tried to be cool with them after the fight. And even when Floyd tried to be cool with them, McPanties was still disrespectful. It's like, dude, 
Floyd Mayweather gave you a free invitation to train with him. And your response is, fuck you, kid. Even if Mick Gasper is salty over the loss to TBE, why should that hinder him being cool with TBE? I mean, look at being cool with Floyd as a chance to not only get a sparring session to retest your skills against the best ever, but a chance to also be friends with one of your favorite boxers. Because let's be real, Conor McDorkster is a closet Floyd fan who uses many of Floyd's knuckle game tactics in his MMA fights. But then again, McBarker is so narcissistic that I doubt his ego would even allow him to be cool with Floyd without trying to turn that relationship into another war too. Conor taking L's will always be a good thing. And anti-douchebags should always mock the fall of guys like Conor McGregor. Just like they mocked, disrespected, and discredited legendary OG Jose Aldo. You claim to be a stand-up fighter, you getting rocked by Nate Diaz, and you turn into an NCAA wrestler. Shooting takedowns. Giving up your back quicker than a hoe. Just, just giving up your back quicker than a hoe. Listen, I can understand people get choked, but dude, like, you de- like fight it off. You just gave up your back, bro. It wasn't like it was like a slick technique Nate used or like kind of caught you doing a transition or a, a scuffle and you just wound up with him on your back. No, you, you casually bridged, you made it easy and just rolled over. You know, I can see if you're in the middle of a scrimmage and the other guy just somehow wound up on your back. But that's never the case with Connie. I mean, it's one thing to have your back taken. It's another thing to just straight give up your back. And I ain't knocking people that get choked out. It happens. People that, you know, somehow end up with a motherfucker on their back. But you, motherfucker, you casually bridged while this man had you in full mount and rolled over to your stomach. Like, who does that? Like, come on, who does that? That's like the worst shit you can do in that position. Karma, baby. Like I said, we should always mock and applaud the downfall of guys like this. Every time Connor loses, the power of the mockery increases. Just like every time Connor wins, the power of his asshole behavior increases. Well, inversely, the more he loses, the power of mocking and shaming him increases. As it should. Mockery and shame towards buffoons and assholes serves a very constructive purpose in the black hole. Many members of the observable universe may think McAlcoholic is funny, but not the ninth dimension. Decent people, or people that consider themselves decent people, should always be vocal about their disdain for this guy's bullshit. I'm telling you, the man's fake. Shit, it ain't no coincidence the name Connor got the word con in it. Because he been conning everybody. It's obvious a lot of his confidence has taken a huge hit. You know what I mean? It didn't plummet it. And I think that's a good thing. Something other fighters should capitalize on. Get him now while he all broken and insecure with himself. Get him now while he all broken and beaten. Continue to beat on his confidence until he don't rack up any more wins. See, kind of some of those guys, he's all meek and humble when he gets humiliated. But as soon as you give him the chance to be a prick again, he'll take that chance quicker than a shark that smells blood. Society doesn't need people looking up to guys like Conor McGregor. I mean, think about it. Think about if a whole bunch of motherfuckers in society acted like Conor McGregor. Bro. See, all the red panty night shit, the who the fuck, I, I, you, I can admit some of that shit was funny, but that he's too extra. You know, he, he, he's excessive. And imagine if people uh, started literally acting like him to a T, the excessiveness and all. I mean, come on, dog, let's be real. Guys like Conor McGregor are super polarizing and practically force you to take an extreme stance. 
You can't sit on the fence with guys like this. Because if you do, then you're just as bad as the establishment that rewarded that guy for all of his lunatic behavior. These types of guys practically force even some of the most laid back individuals to become more vocal in their disdain in order to counterbalance the buffoonery that spawns from allowing guys like Mick Squealer to run amok. And on the final note, to any people that are still up in arms over the iconic UFC 229 brawl, don't trip. It's all good. Just relax. Don't worry about it. It was just Habib promoting the fight. Wink, wink. That's all. You know, just like damn near killing women with dollies was promoting the fight. Wink, wink. Habib, Habib was just promoting the rematch. Wink, wink. Promoting the fight. I mean, after all, it's only business.